totally your call. Hi, Kat. And we'll just kind of let people, we'll start, we'll let Dan take over at 10.05 and that'll let more people, give more people a chance to make it. Um, or even, and Dan, if you want to like just start telling us about you, that's cool. Too. Yeah, we could do that. Can you hear me? Yep. Everybody hear me nice and clear? Yep. I can, yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Nice. All right. Okay, yeah, we got a few people right on. Awesome. Or wait, let, right, me, let me talk first. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, Dan is a yoga instructor. And the first yoga class I ever took was in Brockville at um, at his his home studio, not the studio that you have now. And Dan's come to both of the retreats that I've had on the Ottawa River to teach the Wim Hof uh, breathing method and the pillars of the Wim Hof program. So it's been really cool reconnecting with him and learning more about him and having him teach us a bunch of um, the breathing techniques, but the, the yo I really like Dan's style of, of yoga. He's been guiding people for a long time. So um, it's been fantastic, Dan, to have you, have you in my life. I'm super stoked. Oh man, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> it's been awesome, <laughs> man. And my, my mom has always gone to Dan's, Dan's yoga as well. So it's, um, we haven't been, uh, I haven't hung out a huge amount, but he's been around for a long time. It's really cool. Yeah, man. No, no, it's been good too, man. And I love your group when we go up there and where your retreats, they're, they're phenomenal doing the, the workshops out in nature, which is really cool. And uh, the kayaking crowd, man, they're just like, they're stoked, man. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Cool, dude. Yeah, go for it. All right. Good morning, everybody. Everybody good today? Give the thumbs up. If you're not, if you're oh, not, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's Monday. It's, you're <laughs> gonna own today. If you're not feeling good, you're gonna after this. This is the good stuff. Anybody who's raised your hand, anybody out there has done the uh, Wim Hof stuff before? Familiar with it? We got one, two. Okay, this is excellent. I like it. Newbies, this is good. Because the first time's usually just very, very profound. Um, I'll just give you a little bit. Um, when we, we give these workshops, um, there's kind of like a flow to it. And first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Dan DeLewis. Um, I am a breath coach. I am a mindfulness coach, meditation, yoga instructor. I've been doing this for about 15 years. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to have uh, trained under some amazing teachers from Wim Hof. I've climbed lots of mountains with him. Um, and lived at ashrams. Um, I've been very lucky to be able to um, experiment on myself through all of these esoterical practices, but that was in the beginning, and I've taken the science and the esoterical, so like the East and the West, and to be able to put them together, and, and a lot of that came about because of Wim Hof, and Wim Hof and what we do is and the things that we can do are not supposed to be able to be done by humans um they've seen it now in science how we're doing it and that's why it's a method now because we see it helping so many different people um and uh, a lot of studies there's about a hundred and some different studies i believe and experiments that are going to be going uh, on in the next i don't know like while of course some of them have shut right down but um, the reason why I came to this, and just a little background, is um, when my father got sick with cancer, um, my wife was also sick with cancer. And uh, when my dad passed away, and we were going through that, the day, two days after, three days after he, he passed away, I tore my Achilles completely. So I was shut down and was going through a pretty dark time, even with the yoga and all the stuff that I knew. And a friend introduced me to the Wim Hof method, and it was like that. I grieved, everything came out. It was pretty much, um, it was like washing my nervous system and my brain. 
It was so beautiful. All I did was tears and cry and emotion and process. And after that, I was hooked. I looked at my wife and I said, I'm going to meet this guy. I need to train under him now. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to uh, become one of his instructors and now one of his assistants. Um, I help him with the winter expeditions and stuff. Uh, I was just there with him in um, Poland where I trained 100 uh, people with him. Uh, we climb up a mountain in our shorts where it's very, very cold, which seems very, very counterintuitive. When you're thinking about going up a mountain, you're usually covered in a lot of stuff. So um, I'm going to teach you some secrets today on how you're able to withstand stressors coming in and especially nature stressor because nature is your greatest teacher. Nature is the healer. It is what can heal our bodies and our minds. Um, we're living in a very, very fast, hectic world that's moving fast, which even though it's slowed down, the fear that we're consumed by, especially in this time because of what's going on, um, it's moving very, very fast and it's hard for us to slow things down. And this method allows you to press the pause button, shut it all down and go inside. Um, we're out here on the peripheral a lot. Um, we're in this human brain, which is only 4 million years old. You have a mammalian brain, which is I think 20, and then your reptilian brain, which is 40 million years old. So we're gonna tap into the reptilian brain today where you have analgesic properties. You have a pharmacy in there. And in that pharmacy, you have endogenous, means made by us, ourselves, um, opioids and endocannabinoids. So you have a painkiller system in there. And when you stress your body properly in the ways I'm gonna show you right now or in this breath work that we're about to do, you tap into that. And then I'll give you a little bit of explanation. Also, um, when we just talk a little bit about the science, and the science is very important and what it's doing in the breath work to know it but then after you, you can let it go because knowing is the understanding that we're looking for, okay? All those answers are inside. And we like to say in the Wim Hof camp, the breath can breathe consciousness on the inside. And those answers start to come to us. And the answers are on the inside, not up here. We tend to live up here, all right? So the method is for giving us control back of the mind and stability to the nervous system. Because we're consumed up here, we have 50,000 thoughts in a day. Actually, I read a thing, it's 70,000 they think now. 80% of them are negative or more. Uh, most of them are in the future with anxiety. So we're really getting good at practicing and very habitual in our thinking this way, but it's getting us into trouble. So this application of what we're about to do works in so many things in life and especially say in extreme sports, not necessarily. See now, I also look at extreme sports. They're only extreme if you don't know what you're doing and you're especially not prepared mentally. So that's why giving this to kayakers and people that are out there in nature where there's always lessons to be learned and where we need to be even more aware of what we're doing. And this is what the method can bring. Whether it's clarity in your real life or on the river, this is what you want to be able to perform at 100%, right? And we only use very little of our brain. And we're going to light up the brain and become fully lit and conscious up here because we're going to feel it. And we're going to light up every part of the brain is going to get circulation today that it hasn't seen before. And this is going to be good for getting out the inflammation. All right, good at retraining this thing and the nervous system to become more and more stable. And like anything, I said we're very good at habit forming and thinking negative. Well, this is gonna give us a different altered state. That's very important to know because our state is always up here thinking, projecting. Now we're gonna get into the moment and we're just gonna feel again. Now, what we do is there's three pillars. There's the breath work, and it's an over-breath technique, very simple. And its simplicity is where it may seem that it's very simple, the breath work, but with practice, you really start to become aware of the benefits. And I'm talking right away. And this is cross-adaptation. Now, 
stress is very good for us, okay? But stress when it's chronic is not good for us. So that's what this method is. This method is a stressor. It's stress coming into the body and we're able to handle that stress. This is done in the breath work, but also in the cold therapy. And of course, after this, you guys are all welcome to go and run and jump into something cold. This will be good for you. And if you're not ready for that, no problem. At least we'll get the breath work in. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of science. And this is why the Nobel Peace Prize was given in hypoxia or um, low oxygen levels and high CO2. So I'll get to that in a second, why that's so important. When we start to breathe, what we're gonna do is breathe over, an over breath, not hyperventilation. I don't like to look at it like that because hyperventilation, guys, looks like this. <laughs> you'll breathe trauma and you'll actually create a panic attack if you breathe like that. Now, if you over breathe, which looks like this, fully in, and we'll do it just through the nose at the beginning, then you let go with no force. Fully in. Then we let go. So notice, my focus is on my belly in, expand chest, big as I can, then I just let it go, like I'm letting stress go. I'm kind of stressing bringing the breath in, but then I let it all go. And there we are finding a balance. Now, when we start the breathing, a common misconception is, is that we're over breathing to get more oxygen. You guys are all sitting there with about 97, 98% saturation of oxygen already, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump it up about three or 4% to 100, or maybe even more, we don't know yet. We don't have things that can measure that. So, what we're really doing is we're actually blowing out the CO2. The oxygen goes up when I'm doing this. <sighs> and the CO2 comes down. Now, this is important to know because it's something called hypocapnia. This is where we're completely alkaline. So after 30 breaths today, you guys will have no CO2 in your body, none. You're gonna have about 100% oxygen level and you're gonna be extremely alkaline. That means there's no acid in the body. You're gonna be very fully charged, we'd like to say. Now, when we're up here, this is what happens, which is kind of the trick in how you're hacking your system, your nervous system and your brain. When you are highly alkaline up here and there's no CO2, see the thing is, is that what makes you trigger to breathe in is CO2. So now we have all this O2 and we have no CO2. So the body and the nervous system and the brain relax and they go, well, there's no CO2, we can chill out. But he's chilling out with the breath being held, which is a stress and he's calm. Well, this is interesting. That's what the nervous system is seeing, an adaptation now. Now, when you're up here alkaline, all that oxygen you brought in, it binds. The red blood cells grab it and won't let go of it. So this is why you guys are gonna be able to say maybe two minutes with your lungs empty, holding your breath. Now, this is great. When we're up here, the oxygen won't be let go by the red blood cells. There's still no CO2. And now after all those breaths, we're holding our breath. Well, all the cells need to do something. They don't have oxygen because the oxygen is being held onto by the red blood cells. So all of your cells, trillions of them, start to come out and do anaerobic work. That's without oxygen. So it starts to eat up half cells, dying cells, cancer cells. So now you're cleaning house. You're cleaning all that shit out of the back of the fridge that you don't eat. When the food gets down, all of a sudden you're eating it up. So this is like it's cleansing. So here we are cleansing the body, but when we do that anaerobically, it creates an acid. Now alkalinity starts to come down during that breath hold after that first 40 or 30 breath. Now the oxygen's coming down and the CO2 starts to come up because you have that acid. Now you're able to now bring the oxygen right down. And this is where we like to say the magic also happens. CO2 is high you're down to 40, 50% saturation of oxygen. This is called hypoxia. Now you may have heard of intermittent hypoxic training. The Russians figured this out and didn't tell anybody in the 60s and 70s. That's why their athletes were so strong in the Olympics. Well, steroids was probably in there too, but 
they figured out a few tricks. Now, after that, all the Olympians started to go up into the mountains where there was less oxygen to train. And what that does is stresses you again, but it's a short-term stress. So here we are, high CO2, low O2, and this is where magic happens. You're upregulating a gene when you're in hypoxia that creates more red blood cells, that makes you more efficient using oxygen. That's what Lance Armstrong did, but he used things that came from the outside in. So by stressing yourself with low CO2, your body adapts to create more red blood cells so that when you do breathe, you become extremely efficient with it. Now also during that, nitric oxide comes out and opens up all your blood vessels wider and wider than they normally know. So especially in the brain, that's good because now we start to get more circulation. Stem cells, the rust study by Harvard show that during that hypoxia, the body's stressed so much it thinks it's in danger, it sends out the stem cell. It also sends out DMT, if you know what that is, dimethyltryptamine. They don't know where it comes from, but they know it's coming out now. So you feel high. You then tap into this analgesic part of the brain that thinks that there's danger again, a physical danger, so it releases the cannabinoids and the opioids. You're getting high. You're able to stay there in that hypoxia. And again, that's where magic's happening. So then we take that big breath in, we come back to a balance, homeostasis. Then we go again. We stretch the cellular machine like this. It's like taking a cell and stretching it this way and this way. You become flexible at a cellular level when you do this breathing. I do this with a lot of Olympic athletes, a lot of professional athletes, because they see once they start doing hypoxic training, they get stronger. Their body can push more, more stamina, more tolerance to pain also. So when we're stressing our cellular machine, the nervous system in the brain, it's like strength training. So what we end up doing is we cross adapt. We're teaching ourselves inside, internally, through the breath, and the breath holds, that I can handle stress now. So now when those thoughts come in that are always stressing us out, they start to lose a little bit of power. The more we practice this and create this altered state, the nervous system loves it. It starts to go, okay, I like this place here. The more you practice it, the easier it is to get there. The more it cross adapts into your life. Like when your boss says something pisses you off, well, you can't punch him out, but that's what the reptilian brain does is creates all of these different stress hormones because it thinks that there's a physical stress. Your reptilian brain in this modern day doesn't know the difference between a tiger chasing you and that stupid little thought you had about your boss who you don't like. Both of them, your reptilian brain, thinks they're the same. So you stay in that stress hormone. If you stay there long enough, that chronic stress creates inflammation and a lot of autoimmune issues. That's why this method, they're seeing, and I know it myself, anecdotally, thousands of people I've taught this, I watch their lupus. All of these autoimmune issues, arthritis, all of them, symptoms, come right down, especially depression, because depression is also an inflammation. So now, the breath work, and that's just, I could give you science on that for eight hours, but that's the quick way to show you guys that it's going into the cellular machine and stretching it. It has so many benefits to it. Now, if you apply the cold exposure to that, it multiplies those benefits times 100. Because when you get into cold water, again, it's just like the breathing did. During your breathing and your overbreath, it squeezes all your veins closed. It opens them up wide during the breath hold okay. the hypoxic training. So think about this. You're stretching it. Now, oh, I think. can't hear him at all. Unmute. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. 
So after you've exercised the circulatory system just with the breath, squeezing the veins and open them and the arteries, you get into the cold water and it does it again. But when you get into the cold water, the stressor on the outside of the body, these cold shock receptors, think that you're about to die. Cold water's not dangerous, only if you have a heart issue, all right? That means that when we get into the cold water, the only thing that makes cold water dangerous, everybody, is time. If you were in the Caribbean and fell off um, the ship and the water was 90 degrees, in about four to six hours, you have hypothermia. Because as soon as you get to 92, the core temperature, you need an outside external heating source. So when you get into a cold shower or an ice bath, it's not dangerous because you can get out at any point. And if you go one or two minutes, you get the effects and there's absolutely no danger to it. Now, what happens here is you go even deeper into the analgesic part of the brain, release so many feel-good hormones that if you suffer from depression and anxiety and all that, when you get out, it takes your body some work, but it works in resetting thyroid, all of these systems to get back to homeostasis, even the mind. You'll notice that your mind stuff just slows right down. When you get into cold water, those cold shock receptors are sending the signal to the nervous system in the brain that there's a tiger on you and you are being eaten. You are gonna die, but you know you're not. So you train your breath, because it's gonna wanna breathe you out when you get into cold water. It's gonna do this to you. That's the fight or flight to get you out, but we wanna breathe ourselves in, so we go like this. Exhale hard and all the way out. That hits the rest and digest, not the fight or flight. Now, the fight or flight will try to get you out again. <gasps> but you go. <sighs> then you go big in. <sighs> then you inhale <sighs> through the nose. Then you exhale slower. Now, it may take a little time to get the breath under control when you're in the cold. But as soon as you do, it sends a big signal to your nervous system and your brain when your nervous system and your brain were in the scariest situation it thought it thinks it is in your whole life, it's imminent danger. You tell the system, I got it. And you calm down in the ice water because it's only on the outside now. You're focusing. The breath work that you did before created a lot of um, painkillers, which helps you get in, but then you cross adapt from that. Because if you can take the stressor of the cold water through the breathing technique of just blowing out as hard as you can and inhaling as hard as you can, as soon as you get the breath under control, that signal goes to the nervous system. And the nervous system goes, holy shit. That's the scariest thing he's ever done. And he's fine. He has control. He stabilized his mind and his nervous system in one of the most dangerous situations he's ever been in. Now, you have this rush after. The blood vessels open up so wide, you had a plasma flush because they squeezed tight at the beginning, pushing all the blood to the core to save the organs in the brain. Now it's released and now you're high. Your mind is so clear. Then we have the third pillar. We can sit down, close our eyes, and then just quiet everything down even more because we've created the right chemistry in the body and the brain to slow the mind, the monkey mind, right down. And this gives us the opportunity to create the mindset, the reality that we truly want. And we look at it as this, happy, healthy, and strong. The only three things you need. Because if you're happy, the strength comes, the health comes. When we're not happy, we're up here. So the method teaches us full control. And when you apply just the breathing, we'll get you there with some meditation. You place the breathing with some cold therapy and meditation in there. You take back control of your life. You then start to create the realities that you want. It's never, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I work with the military, JT, I work with the special forces. These guys, some of them PTSD after Afghanistan and Iraq and all these places, they're suicidal. They do this method once 
and they never stop again and they're off their meds, they don't go to therapy anymore and they're happy, healthy and strong again. This thing here is the problem. We can do these techniques, simple hacks, breathe a certain pattern, get into some cold water and you teach your system to be strong again. So I'll finish the talk off now before we get to the breath. The reason why the world is in a really shitty place right now, and not necessarily from the COVID, but just mental health is not good. It's going up like this. It's because we believe in our belief system in the modern world now is that comfort is success. The more comfort you have, the bigger house, the nicer cars, the um, you know, all the new technologies, all of these things, cars are going to be able to drive themselves pretty much they can now. You got a Tesla. Soon, you're not going to be able to have to do anything. But the thing with that is, is that in our houses right now, it's 71. It's perfect temperature. It's not cold. It's not hot. What does it do? What do we do when it gets cold? Put the air on. What do we do when it gets, or sorry, when it gets cold, put the heat on. It gets cold, put the, or the warm, we put the air on. So we're always trying to find this perfect space of comfort. And what happens is, is when you take away nature, heat and temperature and cold, that keeps your nervous system and your brain strong because that differentiation and temperature, that fluctuation, the system has to do work and stresses just enough to get it back to a balance when it's cold out or when it's hot out. We don't have that anymore. We also sit in chairs. We sit a lot. We're very comfortable a lot. So gravity, which is supposed to be our modulator too and keeping us strong, we're taking that also out of the equation. Now it's just everything's at a press of a button. Amazon, Prime, next day, whatever. We're making it so easy that we become unsuccessful at being human. We're the only species on the planet that's conscious of mortality. But still we run around and act like we're gonna live forever until something happens. We're squeezing ourselves into a small comfort zone because of comfort. And now when there's a stress, people can't handle it. By doing this method, you bring back stress again for temperature. You bring back stress again to the most fundamental movement, your breath. You do that, and what happens is, is you start to stress your system and teach it how to be strong again. The nervous system, the brain, it can reset. You sleep better. Mother Nature's most amazing secret gift she gave you is good sleep. This will help you sleep like not a baby, a rock. I sleep within one breath when I go to bed at night. I've taught myself how to understand stress. I still get it, but I know what it is. I know how to handle it. And I know how, when I don't handle it properly, there's shitty consequences. It's not as good. So when we also perform these things in a habitual way, because we're all compulsive by nature, guys, you know, in our compulsivity, we should have good stuff in there instead of just letting the mind gallop and haplessly just take us through life. The more control we get over this, again, it goes back to the reality that we want and we can control and the one we really, truly want. And it becomes almost like you're finding your true authentic self. You're going to feel like a kid again here in a few minutes where like there's that safety net around you. Where now, you don't have to worry. All of the answers are right there. We just go inside to feel again. So you guys are about to feel. You're going to let go of the monkey mind, and we're going to go inside. Now, the breath technique, if anybody's done the yoga or any kind of breathing before, any kind of breath work, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through four rounds of about 30 breaths each. Now the first round is gonna be just through the nose, in and out. The second and third round is gonna be in through the nose and out of the mouth. Now I'm gonna give you the option on the fourth round to breathe just through the mouth. But remember at any point, you guys, 
You can go back to your normal breathing. You can just stay at the gear. If it's just through the nose you like, you do that. We want to make sure also that the breath is a flowing breath. I don't want to inhale, hold, and then exhale and empty it. We want to leave a little air in the lungs also. So it'll kind of look like this. And just as it's about to stop, there's some in there still, you can squeeze it out. But just as that exhale is stopping, because you're just doing it very, very, um, you're just letting it go. There's no force. You leave a little in there, then you breathe in again. Now you're going to get tingling in the fingers, in the toes. You're going to get tingling in the face, maybe, buzzing in the ears and the lips. You may get cold. You may get hot. This all means that you're inside. You're changing the chemistry and you're doing it right. But like I said, at any point, go back to your normal breath. Now, when we inhale, I want you to think of first going into the belly, then bring it to the chest. And I'll just show you. If everybody wants to sit up nice and tall, just sit up. Put your hand on your stomach like this and then on your chest. Now, I'm going to inhale and watch what I do with the belly first. I inhale here and I pushed it out. Now I inhale, lift it to the chest. Then I let it go. Then I inhale, belly, chest, let it go. Inhale, belly first out, chest, let it go. Okay, now some of you that have never seen that before, have it breathe like that, you may even get lightheaded after one breath, two breaths. Because when you push the belly out, guys, you bring the breath deep into the deepest part of your lungs, the biggest part also. We're usually breathing up here, fight or flight, breathing through the mouth, creating even more fight or flight and anxiety when we do that. As soon as we start to take deep breaths in, we start to pull things out. So you may also feel some emotion here because when we don't to kind of push things down, the breath likes to do this again <gasps> and stay up there. We're now about to go deep, all right? So don't worry if it's your first time, your breath is gonna get better. It's like anything you practice, you get good at. And then after this, if any of you want, I have, classes even online and free and we'll talk about that at the end you can practice i give them daily so now i want everybody okay we got a question up here hold on yeah go ahead bud hey dan thanks my name's chuck um do you recommend we stand or sit on a chair sit in a pillow oh, no. yeah yeah so i'm gonna, i'm about to do the safety stuff about this <laughs> now very good question from chuck you're gonna get lightheaded and you're gonna alter your state so the best way to do the breathing is to do it in the morning before you eat or at least after you've eaten, give it some time to get in there because you don't want to be breathing deep and moving that stuff all around. First thing, you also want to be sitting comfortably, leaning back, more or less a straight spine. And I want you leaning on something so you can relax or lay down, whatever you want to do. Myself. I love laying down because I can focus on that breath, bring it into the belly and chest. The rest of my body's just laying there relaxed. Now, if you want, it's whatever you feel comfortable with, all right? Safety-wise, because it creates an altered light state in the mind, you never do this standing. You never do this near water, in water, because you're able to hold your breath. We don't want to do that. Shallow water blackout, you can drown in two inches of water. You wake up and take inhale the water in, you're done. Stay away from water. Never do the breathing near or in the water. Also, never do it operating machinery, any kind of car, anything like that again, because you create a light state in the mind where the mind goes away and you go inside and feel and you're in a meditative state. You don't want to be driving around like that. Okay, so safety wise. Now, if you're susceptible also to seizures, if you're pregnant, or if you have 
heart issues, you don't want to do these exercises. Now the seizure part, you consult a physician. I have lots of people that actually use it for that in regulating, but we have to be careful with it. Also pregnancy, we're not really sure what goes on there. And you're bringing stress to the heart, so we have to make sure that the heart is safe, okay? So other than that, guys, let's begin our first round. So I want everybody to just kind of get comfortable. I want you to be comfortable now. Now, if you'd like, you can put the hand on the belly and the chest to get the rhythm if you don't feel you have it yet. But really, you want to feel that inhale. Just feel the lungs and stretch them. Then exhale, and it's just letting go. I'll give you the direction, okay? Here we go. First breath in through the nose, out of the nose, first round. Inhale, belly, chest, ribs, big as you can. Bring it in. Let it go. Just relax. Fully in. Let it go. Deep breath fully in. Letting go. Maybe close the eyes. Start your focus inward deeper. Inhale deep as you can. Letting go. Full breath in. Let it go. Deep inhale fully in. Let it go. Focus now. Bring the breath in. Belly, chest, ribs expand. Stretch the lungs. Then let the breath go. Full breath fully in. Letting go. Feel the change now already. Chemistry shift fully in. Let it go. Feel it now, deep in, bring the positive. Life force comes in. Let the tension, shoulders relax, go. Just relax, inhale deep now, focus, stretch the lungs, let it go. Fully in, letting go. Deep as you can in, let go. Deeper in, let go. Okay, let's finish this first round strong, fully in. Let go, full breath, fully in. Let go, deeper in, let go. There we go, bring it home guys, in, let go. Here we go, five more in. Let go. Four more in. Let go. Three more in. Let go. Two more in. Let go. One more deep. Let go. Okay, last one, everybody fully in. Let the breath go. Stop there on the exhale. Lungs empty, just relax. If you filled the lungs back up, just exhale and hold. Eyes softly closed. Relax your jaw now. Feel the tongue soft, shoulders soft. Now I want you to let the mind stuff go and do that by feeling. What do you feel right now? Just observe it, don't figure it out. The innate intelligence is doing what it's supposed to. Feel the magic happening on the inside. The mind stuff comes in, only observing now, not attaching. Go back to the body and feel again, reconnect. Now don't force this breath hold. We want it though wait till the last second. If an intense urge comes to breathe, you do that. Take that breath in and hold again. But if not, we're almost there for the first retention, about 45 seconds to a minute. Our last few seconds. 
All right, everybody, full breath. Inhale, fill the lungs and hold. Hold it here. Now experience the rush and the retention during your hold opened up those blood vessels so that when you took this breath in to hold again, you have a tsunami of oxygenated blood flooding all parts of your brain. Just feel that euphoric, subtle rush. Remember, witness it, don't figure it out. Just 15 seconds, so let go now. Exhale through the nose, soft, let it out. Second round, we can go to the second gear. In through the nose, deep as you can, out of the mouth. Fully in, let go. Fully in, let go. Deep in, let go. Fully in, let go. Deeper in. Let it go. Now inhale, nose, belly, chest, ribs big. Let go from the mouth, stress goes. Fully in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Deep in. Let go. Feel that magic happening. Bring it in. Fully charge in. Let the negative stress go. Then inhale deep in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Here we go. Finish strong. Deep in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Come on, bring it deep in. Focus. Let go, no force. Deeper in. Let go. Here we go. Five more. Deep in. Let go. Four more in. Let go. Three more in. Let go. Two more deep in. Let go. One more deep in. Let go. Okay, everybody, last one. Fully in. Let it go. Stop. Hold the breath there. And I want you to feel again. I'm timing this one. We're going to go to a minute and a half. But don't worry if you can't hold the breath with the lungs empty for the minute and a half. Just take the breath. But you're going to notice each round, you become more comfortable. The nervous system stabilizes to a deeper level. We're conditioning ourselves to handle this now. I want you to just let the shoulders, all body tension, let it go. The whole body's relaxed. Relax your face. You hold a lot of tension there. Now notice it's like you've pressed pause on life here to feel again. By just pressing pause on the breath after changing the chemistry in the breathing exercise. You slow the whole world down. Already one minute holding comfortably. Almost there. Don't force. If you have to, take the big breath in and hold and just wait for us. But if not, last few seconds. All right, one minute 30. Everybody, deep breath, inhale, hold. Again, experience that beautiful, euphoric, subtle rush. Oxygenated blood flooding through a brain that it has more circulation. Resetting the brainstem, the nervous system. And exhale, let it go. Third round, we stay at the second gear. In through the nose, out of the mouth. Everybody fully in. 
There you go. Deep in. There you go. Deep in. There you go. Fully in. There you go. Deep in. There you go. Feel it now. Deep in. Let go. Keep going now. Find that beautiful rhythm in deep as you can. Stretch lungs, then let it go. No force. Just about to end. Bring it in again. Deep as you can. Then let it go. Find that beautiful rhythm. The focus is on that inhale. Stretch the lungs, then let it go. No force. Then bring it in again, deep as you can in, letting go. You guys got it. See that already breathing, more rhythm, more flow. Feel it. Feel it deep inside, changing the chemistry, shifting it. You're in control. You have a remote control in your hand. It's called the breath. Let's go. Finish strong. Last 10. <sighs> Last nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, pull it in, let go. Okay, last one, deep as you can, everybody in. Let go, stop, and go back inside to the center. This is the place that you've created. You're conditioning now for the mind and the nervous system to go to the center, to go to the center deep inside the brain, to the heart center, to reestablish the connection that is lost because we are in fear-based, consumed by that thinking. That thinking is not there now. It's just feeling and understanding. Going for two minutes on the hold now. Remember, don't force, but our third retention will allow you to go deeper into the nervous system. Creating more stillness, you use less energy. Calm, peaceful. Just relax. Let it just happen. Be the witness. Relax. Remember never forcing. If you have to, take the breath in. not, we're almost there. Last few seconds. Everybody deep breath fully in. Holding two minutes now was that hold comfortable again. Teaching the nervous system in the brain. You got this. Hold, feel that beautiful rush opening up even more. And exhale, let it go. Okay, now the fourth round, you have the option to go up a gear. Inhale through the mouth and out of the mouth, but go where you feel comfortable. Fully in, deep as we can. Let go. 
Pull it in. Let go. Pull it in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Deep in. Let go. Pull it in. Let go. Here we go. Deep in. Let go. Pull it in. Let go. That's it. Kick it down now. This is your last round. Remember, we're still in no hurry to breathe. You are focused. Inhale, belly, chest, ribs, big. Letting go. With each round, with each breath now, you are peeling away layers of programming. Belief systems are starting to fade away. You are going to the true center now where we can feel again, be a kid again. Let go of all that programming that's not serving us. We're processing. Let's go. Finish this last round strong. You got this, everybody. Fully in. Let it go. Deep in. Let it go. Deep in. Let it go. Deep in. Let it go. Deeper in. Let go. Finish strong. Deep. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Deeper in. Let go. Keep going, everybody. Almost there. We finish strong. We finish together, creating the coherence with all these people around the world. Creating a coherence with our heart and our breath. Find that rhythm. Let's finish it. Let's go. Last 10. Let go. Nine. Let go. Eight. Let go. Seven in. Let go. Six in. Let go. Here we go. Last five. Deep. Let go. Class four. Let go. Class three. Deep in two. Let go. Last one in one. Let go. Okay, last one. Here we go. Fully in deep as you can. Let go. Stop. Here we go, everybody. Showing ourselves that we've regained that control to feel again, to reestablish the connection that's lost from the fear-based fear thinking mind. Pressing pause, experiencing stillness again. Floating like a child, like a kid again. We've created the safety net where we can go to this place anytime with 30 to 40 breath. Then exhaling, pressing pause, pause on life, experiencing stillness, conditioning the nervous system to be stabilized, but to be stabilized by us. Don't force this hold. Remember, listen to your body. The more you listen, though, the less you think, the longer the breath hold. Just relax now. Relax. Remember, never forcing, take the breath if you need to. Almost there, two minutes now, holding the breath, no air in the lungs, still comfortable.
Two minutes, 30 seconds, no air in the lungs. Everybody deep breath fully in. Hold. Now I want you to squeeze as you hold the breath. Squeeze your stomach, your abdomen tight into the spine. Squeeze your chest muscles. Straighten your arms. Squeeze your fists. Squeeze. Squeeze for five, four, three, two. Squeeze the stomach. And now I want you to let out a big sigh. Ah, oh, let out the air. Oh. Two more sighs. Big inhale. Just let it all go. Oh. One more deep in. Just let that side go. Let the tension go. Oh. Stay seated or laying there comfortably. Eyes softly closed, still. I want you to go into recovery now. Phase where we just quietly breathe through the nose. I want you to focus at the nose and quiet it down. Notice how quiet the mind is now. Notice the heart quieting down. You've reestablished the connection to the body by letting the monkey mind go. It loses power here. We reestablish connection between the heart and the mind, where we feel at a deep level. We may notice intuition here. Creative thoughts start to come. Ideas. But notice that the negative mind is not as much there, and it's easier to let it go. Now we've set ourselves up to now do an even deeper work within. The second breath technique is very simple. Just stay as you are. I'm going to count with you. Just follow instruction. We're going to inhale for four. I'm going to count. Then I'm going to count. We're going to hold for seven. Then we're going to exhale from the mouth like you're blowing through a straw with pierced lips to create some pressure. The inhale is through the nose, which brings in energy. When you hold the breath for seven, it will slow the heart down because the nervous system sees that there's cutbacks in oxygen. As the nervous system tells the heart to slow down, we then exhale for eight with the pierced lips, creating a back pressure. It slows the nervous system and stabilizes it even more and stabilizes the vagus nerve for rest and digest, we'll go into a deep, calm sleep state almost. This is called the sleeping pill. When we're ever stressed, or we do this before bed to quiet our minds. Everybody deep inhale through the nose. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, pierced lips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale deep. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, pierced lips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale deep. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, pierced lips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, one. Last breath. Inhale deep. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale slowly. Pierce lips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the nose. Now exhale just from the nose. Quiet. Inhale quiet now. Exhale quieter. Inhale. Exhale. 
Notice the energy in the mind. Know that the work you've done has produced this result. The 478 breath completely calms the nervous system and the mind down after the over breath. We can now allow the mind to process healthy responses. But in the mind, you're allowed to now step away from the thought stream that consumes us. It doesn't have that power because we've created the proper chemistry here. Practice a simple mindful technique to create even more stabilized nervous system and brain. I want you to focus at your nose tip. And when you inhale, notice the subtle difference in the breath, the temperature. Inhale, feel cool air. And exhale quietly at the nose tip, feel slightly warmer air. You're feeling the breath. You're consciously breathing quiet to quiet the mind. But the mind will resist. It wants the drama of the past to project then to the future to worry. But those places don't exist. The breath here in this moment exists. When you see your mind being pulled away into thoughts, recognize, don't resist and force. See the thought, steer back to the breath. At the tip of the nose, quiet the breath down so you can't hear it. Then feel the breath touch you. You are in the moment again. What wandered into the mind loses power as it wanders through. And we save energy by not focusing on that thought where we spend the energy. Reinvest it now. For just a few minutes, practice. Consciously breathing, quietly feeling that breath. When you're taken away, see the thought and come back again. Feel, quiet the mind, breathe well now.
Slowly start to steer awareness back. Take a deep breath, inhale. Exhale. Pull you in. Then exhale. Okay, so just quietly come back. Just bring maybe just a little bit of awareness in how you feel right now. I want you to compare maybe how you feel now to when you first seen this guy that looks like a pirate with a big beard and toque and whatever. And before you started this, how you felt and how you feel now, and how you've created a different reality, a different consciousness, a different feeling. And that feeling comes from one of the most simplest things that when we consciously breathe and put it in a pattern, it can create different chemistry and a different way for us to feel an altered state. And this is where magic happens because we're teaching the nervous system and conditioning it to be in a different place. The reptilian brain and our fear is for survival. But we've become so good at practicing worrying for survival that we're stuck. And you've reestablished the connection, consciously breathing, feeling. Um, just a note on the 478, if you're stressed, if you're going into a meeting, if you're coming out of a stressful situation or meeting, um, that 478 is called the sleeping pill. And they call it the sleeping pill because if you do that before you go to bed, within a month, taking only five breaths like that, your sleep pattern completely changes. I work with people that are insomniacs. Within two weeks to a month, sleeping. When you wake up in the middle of the night, some people do tension. First thing you do is don't turn on your mind because something in the mind that was being processed turned it on wants you to be up here and wake up because there's a threat. Your reptilian brain, when it's slipped sleeping like that, is still alive thinking there's threat. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, first thing you do, get good at it, is practice inhale, count one, two, three, four. You hold the breath and count the numbers to seven. Then you exhale, pierce lips slowly for eight. You'll fall asleep again within a couple breaths. This is why I teach the Wim Hof breathing the most powerful breathing technique on the planet, which incorporates breath holds, over breathing, slow exhale, calm. It takes everything and puts it together to completely exercise the systems. The 478 after that brings all those systems even to a more deeper baseline, more homeostatic balance, where then you can do the work by sitting there quietly reprogramming because the reprogramming is when something comes in it's learning that that thought will grab us normally take us on a journey into the next thought into the next thought but if we practice seeing now and letting it go and coming back to the breath we start to teach and condition our nervous system and strength train the brain and nervous system to be under our control the mind's going to wander guys but these little exercises, and these are studies, more or less say that if you practice meditation every day, which meditation sucks unless you start breath work before, because people don't have the patience. I think it's one out of 20 people stick with meditation or even it's even lower percentage. You add breath work, it changes the meditation because you've breathed yourself in there. When you're teaching your mind that you can let go of thoughts, the mind records all of that. Every breath you take in your life, every thought is recorded in a limbic system. You start to do these exercises and you create that emotional filing or that emotional filing cabinets there, you start to create different files. Files that are more based in your wellness and your well-being. And that's about it for today, guys. Anybody got any questions about all the crazy stuff we just did? <laughs> 
You guys, well, I like yeah. sharing too. So anybody wants to share, just put your hands up and uh, Ben will put you in there. So what do we got here, Jess? Right on, buddy. Hey, so what do you think? I love it. Yeah, I've been doing Wim Hof breathing for, for oh, I would say, almost a year now. Uh, awesome. It's, yeah, I am definitely a big fan. I just had a quick question for you. When you do, I love the four, seven, eight breathing, but I was just wondering when you do cold water, for me, I don't have like a cold plunge. I usually use like cold shower. Um, what do you do for, do you change your breathing up for the cold water? Or what do you do in that situation? Yeah, so the cold water, you just want to reestablish the connection to the deep breath and bring the breath under control. That's where the switch is in. Okay, that's where it switches the nervous system. In that fight or flight, when you get into cold, it goes, <gasps> you want to do this. <gasps> and when I'm with people, I do this trick where I put my hand in front of them so they focus in the ice on my hand instead of <gasps> like this. I focus and tell them to blow my hand away. So they do this. They're like, <gasps> and they go, <gasps> and I feel, and they make it look like they're blowing my hand away. It's a simple psychological trick. But when you get into your cold therapy or your cold exposure, even with the, the bath or the shower, it's really focus on the exhale, lengthen it, empty the lungs, breathe out as hard as you can and as long as you can, then bring it in again, <gasps> then, <gasps> then in, <gasps> and then, <gasps> then once you can inhale fully and exhale fully, switch to the nose. That tells the system you even have more control things quiet down, then you breathe. Once the mind starts to wander and think it's cold again, that's the time to get out. So it's really establishing the connection with the deep breath in and the exhale as far as you can breathe it out and you're switching what the nervous system is trying to do. And you're telling the nervous system that it thinks that there's all this imminent danger and you're like, I got it, I'm cool, I got control. Nervous system goes, all right. So that's what's happening in that situation, man. So that's what you want to do. Reestablish that connection. Don't do the breathing in the shower. <gasps> yeah. Because <gasps> you'll end up passing out, bang, falling over, and then I don't want that phone call. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks so much. I really right appreciate on, it. Awesome. Who do we got next? Anybody else? I, I had a quick question. On the inhaling fully, I noticed you inhaled fully quite quickly. Like you were. You know, being in, I found that I'd, I've never done this before. I, I was trying to do it slowly, you know, like yeah. how um, should you same be trying question. to just fill that up quickly? Yeah. Somebody else I think has the same question and that's usually one I get too. So what you want to do is it, more isn't better. What you're doing is awesome. You're trying to breathe in fully in. So when you do this on your own, you're going to notice that you're going to kind of go with it. Everybody's physiology is different. Um, your real focus is on that inhale as big as you can. So you want to get into the belly and you're going to get good at it. You're going to practice this. You're going to get really good at breathing in deep like this and then let go. It'll get better. You're going to get better at breathing because guys, at six, seven years old, people don't, they tell you, suck your belly in, lift your chest. You want to look big and strong. You start to reverse breathe. So now from all these years you've been on the planet, you're breathing up here. Today, you're starting to breathe down into the belly. It's foreign. So by the fourth round, you were probably breathing better. Okay. And by the second time you do this, third, fourth, you start to realize this starts to open up more more, more. You start to be able to take it in and then let go. And then even through the nose, which is, I like breathing through the nose for new, uh, people that are new at this because the nose gets them to breathe a little slower with a little more focus. So don't worry if you weren't keeping up, say, with me. As long as you were getting some tingling, feeling it, you're getting there, especially if it's your first time. Because your cells and your body and your brain never experienced that before. You get lightheaded usually after the first few deep breaths anyways. But you're going to notice that tingling and buzzing in the ears, lightness, all of that goes away with practice. You'll get that lightness and you'll get that because you're breathing more efficient. 
your body's getting more efficient with circulation. It's getting more efficient breathing. So all of a sudden, the tingling, which will happen, you'll get it, but it won't be as profound, which is fine. The thing is, is think about it. You're just getting really good at that breath. So just remember, it's just going to get deeper. And, and uh, Ben can leave my information because this is what I've done. I've already done. This is my second call today, and I have another one. I have two more after this. So I, I, this is what I do. Um, any questions like that about the breathing even after, just let me know. Okay, man? That, that answer your question, Chad? All right, man. Right on. I How much more time do you have, Dan? Because uh, uh, I, I got about 15 to 20 more. Okay. Yeah, Eugene, there's a, Eugene has a question. He's got like a hand raised thing here. No, that, right I wasn't on, Eugene. Where's, no, that's, where's, is he over? Where's Eugene? Right on. Or I got Eugene, him. Sorry. My question is, is that those of us who kayak, we spend a lot of time in the cold and in the water. Uh, yeah. And those who aren't that good actually spend a lot of time upside down in the cold, in the water. I guess sort of my question is a bit for Ben. Do you suggest that once we go onto the water, we actually exhale, or do we actually hold our breath at that point? When you go I under hold. the water? In other words, if I flip and I'm upside down, face counting fish, should I actually exhale in order to improve my ability to get back up? No, I don't no. think so. No, if, I'm just trying to figure want, out where this fits in with what I do between when I'm paddling versus when I'm trying to reach a, a meditative state at this point. So I can answer that if you want, Ben, with, uh, okay. with science. So when you go under and you're upside down, it kind of puts you into a little bit of a stressor, right? Ever so slightly, yes. <laughs> okay, so when you go under, obviously, usually you'll take that big breath in, right? That's, this, you know, because you're going, you're going to take it in. But uh, usually you it hold... I can't take a breath because it's generally a surprise. So I'm usually just find myself. <laughs> okay, on... so whatever air you have in the lungs, I keep right. it there, right? Okay. Now, and then that allows you, and you're going to notice that stress starts to change when you practice this kind of stuff. You don't become a stress now because you're able to go into a deep meditative state during fight or flight, just like the breath is creating stress and the ice creates stress. Now, when you get into fight or flight, turning upside down, you're not gonna feel as much stress. For one thing, you're already not gonna be using up as much oxygen. So you wanna stay relaxed even more. So you're gonna teach yourself, which is great, and I'll give you an anecdotal story about stress for me and how this helped, but it helped me just to calm right down. So you're gonna provide yourself with a better environment, especially up to here, to get back in. Now, say if you can't get up. So now what you wanna do if you wanna breathe, or just say you need to hold your breath longer, let a little bit out, just a little bit. That releases a little bit of um, CO2, which allows us to feel a little bit of oxygen released to the brain that may be in there, and you get to hold it longer. So one time I almost drowned surfing in Mexico, and when I was being enveloped by these waves, I was underwater for three, four minutes sometimes, and I'm holding, and I'm just letting go a little bit, and I'm just looking, eyes open, salt water, swimming for the light. And then I let myself come up, and that's what you do. You exhale a little bit to let a little bit out. Allows you to stay under, especially if you got that sharp feeling you got to breathe. That's what you want to do in those situations anyways. I mean, Ben probably, I mean, there's probably a protocol for that, but that's how I would speak to that in, in, in the science terms, and that'll help you a little bit. And then Perfect. Riley had a question. Yeah, Riley. Hi. So uh, I've got two questions actually. The first one, is there a limit to how many times a day we can do sort of a longer breathing session like we just did? Yeah, um, the breath is really good for us, but guess what? The breath can also harm us if we do it too much. And I have lots of people that you know practice with me that will get on a call. And I notice they're, they're doing it two times a day, three times a day, and they're getting anxiety or something and then they'll breathe and they'll, they'll show me they're breathing like this because they're just going for that tingling almost pass out feeling so it's really about see think about this more isn't better better is better and then better leads to more and that applies to anything get good at doing something and then 
You'll get better at it. It may lead to more. All right, we got the little guy joining us in there, right on. Um, so listen to your body. If you're feeling really good at night and you're sleeping well and you're doing it once a day, then that's good. Do that four, seven, eight before you go to bed. That stops a miracle, guys. Please do that and then get back to me in a month. Tell me how you're sleeping if you don't have those issues. But if you have those issues. But to go back is that you always listen to your body, guys. Now, you don't, you don't want to be doing ice exposure three times a day. I ran into that also. You don't want to be breathing. I ran into a guy breathing on his motorbike in Toronto when he'd get into traffic jams. He's wondering why he's got headaches. I go, well, you're breathing in all kinds of pollution, you dumbass. You're supposed to be in a nice, quiet place. Get into a routine and start off. Like, if you, need, if you're, if you have depression, I, I always recommend do it twice a day. Now, if you have anxiety a little bit, once a day is good. Maybe twice if you find it's really calming you down, the breath work. But really listen to your body, man. Um, it, it, the more you do this stuff, the more it creates awareness. And you start to become more aware of the innate intelligence and the signals that it gives us. Because we're starting to reprogram. And mostly we're up here, we're disconnected. And that's why people get sick and go, oh, why is this happening? Well, there was many signals already there. The more we practice becoming aware, especially through the breathing, the more information comes to us naturally, intuition, creativity. I mean, I'm in meditation after breathing, and, and the stuff that I need to figure out, dude, it comes in like that. So, you know, if you find that you're not getting good effects and stuff, then maybe there's something we should look at, maybe too much. You know, back off. But, you know, maybe twice a day. I got a guy right now, call, he was on this morning. He does it morning with me and he has a recording of me doing it in the afternoon, you know, and he's got a lot of depression. So I want to kick his ass and get him in gear and get that energy in there. Right. And he's really doing well with it. But if he's really high anxiety and it's causing a little more, then I'll be careful with that. But, you know, reach out to me, Ben, give, you know, give them my links and, and, and stuff. Um, I have a new site coming out soon. It's going to be a comprehensive breath work meditation yoga site so that'll also be coming and lots of information there but reach out man if you guys need anything after this that comes to you okay but that good riley yeah awesome thank you right on what do we Marcy, got here we got Tanya. to me or who who we got here somebody marcy got has her hand up I like yeah. okay, marcy. okay thanks um the that question about the speed of the breath so like i I know belly breathing. I used to be a massage therapist, so I taught it even. But when you were doing it, it was more like a like as if I'm in between rolls. Like I rolled up and I'm about to fall back under, so I breathe really fast and hard to get a big deep breath as fast as I possibly can. So yeah. I'm still confused if I should do belly breathing slowly or try to gasp in as much air as possible. I think what you're doing is you're belly breathing as much as you can. Um, don't force too much. You can be a little bit more intense on the inhale. The exhale, we want to let it go because that creates that balance. But if you, know, if you can see me now, what we want to do is we want to get into the belly and the chest. And if I'm doing it through the nose, it's a little longer. It looks like this. But if I'm doing it through the mouth, it's a little quicker because I get more air coming faster, bigger hole. So I inhale like this. So everybody's different, and I think everybody has to find their rhythm. My, my instruction on it is to breathe as deep as you can, then let go. We don't want to bring in too, too much, or I mean too, too fast, and not fill, because that's where we start to have a little bit of problem and maybe getting into the anxiety. So I want to just, you know, with my rhythm, everybody's going to be at a different rhythm once you practice this again. Um, you're going to notice that all of your, I mean, and you're familiar with diaphragmatic breathing. You start to focus on your breath, diaphragmatic breathing. It's not just diaphragm. There's the diaphragm. There's the intercostal and the rib breathing. There's the back breathing. There's the scalene. You can actually... I'm, I've been doing this 15 years and I still don't know how to breathe properly. 
but I practice every day for about an hour. And honestly, the breath's like a, a manual to the body. The more you practice, guys, the more you're going to get really good at breathing. But your focus to answer your question is just breathe as big as you can without too much force. But you're intense, like you're breathing. It's full, then I let it go. However long it takes the individual to get there, go to the belly, the chest big, then let it go. Everybody's going to be a different rhythm. So if you're trying to follow me, I was trying to stay at a kind of a medium rhythm. We don't want to be going fast, though. We just want to go at where this physiology allows us to, then let it go. But then notice how you start to create a lit. You start to become more aware of how you're breathing even, even better. So it's like it's, it's almost like it falls. It'll reveal itself. Thanks. Does that answer your question? I was going to say also the, there's an app, uh, Wim Hof has an app, which will actually have like the breathing that you can do and it'll kind of like guide you through the breathing through multiple rounds. Uh, I found that pretty helpful as well. Yeah. I do it sometimes like this. I'll say inhale one, two, then exhale two, three, four. Depends. In the workshop sometimes I'll even stay with a count of two. Now that can be a count in your mind of two could be even different when you're doing it. So I think you really want to focus on fill the lungs and let it go. Then fill them again, deep as they'll stretch, then let it go. There's no um, hurry. You can breathe deeper and slower, you, you'll get there. If okay. you go too fast, that's, that's the concern. I don't want to... <gasps> You don't want to be like that. You want to be. Something like that. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Marsh. Thank you. You're welcome. What else do we got? Did you have a question, Tanya? Yeah, I did. Tanya. Uh, uh, so in this start like a on a little bit in common or is that something i was doing my breathing? repeat repeat that again uh the first part i didn't hear you were breaking up sorry um when i was breathing in in the beginning i was yawning a little bit yeah. is that a common thing oh yawn is good yawn <laughs> one of the best it, it actually resets all i don't even want to get into that yawning's good <laughs> Don't ever resist yawning. It actually reestablishes homeostasis. Anyway, I can't get into it. It's a long thing. I, I ben, you want to say something to that? No, I, I, I yawn in each round for sure. Oh, that's, that's a side effect. That's okay. You're actually going in. It, 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 your body, it's a signal for your body to take in the oxygen and to reestablish homeostasis. That's good. Yawn, yawn. Right. You're, you're getting back even into a parasympathetic thing. So in polyvagal theory, anyways, we're not getting into it, but <laughs> it's good. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice, man. If you have time, uh, Eugene raises his hand. Do you have time for oh, one I more, man? A question. There seems to be an enormous debate, at least in the kayak community, about breathing through your nose versus breathing through your mouth. And there's been a whole ton written about if you breathe through your nose, you're actually doing better for your body than breathing through your mouth. In fact, there's a whole movement saying we all should get rid of our nose plugs. But you seem to be a proponent of breathing through your mouth. So I'm just curious mm -hmm. if the yin and the yang of that. The then, breathing through the mouth. You wear yeah, a nose so, Yeah, so this is the, the, when I do the breathing, I never breathe through my mouth. That's just Wim, and Wim actually, if you notice, he breathes through his nose and then out of his mouth. See, the, the, the reason why the mouth really kicks in the energy, really gets you into a, blows off the CO2 quickly. Now, there's a really, actually the science behind this whole um, hypocapnic or hypo hypoxic thing is one of the things that we have inside us is nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, when it's in the blood, this chemical, vasodilates, it opens up, it's good for us. When we inhale through the nose, we create nitric oxide. Especially if we breathe fully, 
Then when we let go from the mouth, we don't blow it back out of the nose. So you're actually creating more um, vasodilation. You actually upregulate again these, um, these genes in the body helping to create more red blood cells. You're also upregulating more oxygen. Your lungs become and your organs become more efficient from the nitric oxide. That's why the, the guy that won the Nobel Peace Prize this year or uh, this year for science, he put out an article on the COVID saying in through the nose, out of the mouth, breathing deeply will help you get through it because it strengthens the respiratory system and to do it for so many minutes a day even. So in through the nose, the best way to breathe because okay. it more regulates the fight or flight, brings it down and brings the rest and digest system up. So nose breathing, and we can go into that, breathe through the nose. Now, if you like going, <sighs> kick her down, you know, as long as it's not giving you too much um, anxiety or too much energy that way. You know, you just have to, like I said um, in, uh, to the other young fella there, is that listen to your body. I love breathing through the nose. I'm a yogic guy, come from the yogic background. And I love the science of now in through the nose, out of the mouth. Science can look so deep into the systems now, into the brain, these fMRIs and spec scans, that it shows that the breath is a diagnostic to how we feel. And we can feel better just by changing breath patterns. Because our mind, when we think of stress, a thought, creates a fight or flight breath up here. <sighs> Quick. So, and that creates a breath. Now, if we consciously breathe, we can create how the mind wants to be, how we want the mind to be. So you breathe a certain pattern, you can put your mind and your chemistry in a certain pattern, but if you let your mind do what it wants, you'll breathe through the mouth and you'll breathe short and quiet. So focus on inhale through the nose, out of the mouth, and it really rebalances that system and deeper breathing also. Okay, gotcha. So presumably, Ben, you're a, a don't wear a nose plug person. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, but man, we can talk about that. If, if, dude, if you have time for one more, Preston raise his hand and then I can answer. Yeah, go ahead, man. No, it's okay. I can talk at I'm length going, about nose plugs. No, I'm, I'm going live and it's for free, so they can wait. No. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What's the question, man? Hey, thank you guys for doing this. Um, I just wanted to know, like, if, if we hadn't been in this big Zoom group meeting, Dan, would, would we have done some cold water stuff uh, right at the end of the breathing exercises? Or, like, how does, yeah. that usually, well, how does that usually fit into the schedule? of? It's, it's good to do the – I like to sit up after you guys. If you do this again, sit up and do your meditation after the breath. That's where work, the most profound work is done okay deep work is done because you've created the mindset i told you meditation sucks i work with these ceos that think that stress is the way to go until all of a sudden they can't handle it and then we try to sit them down if they don't do breath work they just want to jump out the window doing the breath work helps okay so um what was the question again i'm getting off topic here well i i was just wondering uh you oh know. so the ice bath yeah I think that uh, I think Ben recorded these videos and and might be giving us an option to watch it again. If I wanted to watch this again, like sure. where would I do where would I do cold water immersion? So you breathe, then meditate. As I got uh, off track with the meditation being so important, then because the breath work and the meditation provides us with the painkillers and all this, and the adrenaline's actually up, guys. You have high adrenaline after the breath work. And you, you don't feel it though. And just another quick thing too, is that breath work and when you do the ice bath, your white blood cell count and your red blood cell count are going up for six days after. So your immune system's sharpening. So it's good to go in after the breath work because you're prepared physically and mentally. So when you get into the water, your, your adrenaline doesn't go, <clears throat> your adrenaline's already here and it goes, <clears throat> and it's easier to control. Now, once you get good at ice bathing, then you can go in any time. But at the beginning, it's really good to do breath work, do a simple meditation, and within 10 to 20 minutes after your breath work, or about you know, 10 minutes after or so, go into the ice bath or the cold shower. 
and then it's like the icing on that cake, man. It's beautiful. That answer the question? Oh, like we got Kat here. Oh yeah, you know, she's, she, no, she doesn't want to, she was just saying yes. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying bye to my son, sorry. Oh, right on. Tell him I said bye too. <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. It's been a that pleasure. That was awesome, Dan. Thank you. Awesome. You guys Thanks, are man. awesome, man. This is great. Like, and, and Ben, give them my email and um, my information and the Facebook page, Superman <laughs> Yoga Center. Guys, there's, there's yoga classes, everything on there. You just have to go back down the feed. I post the live stuff, so it's on there all the time. There's all kinds of breath work. Yesterday, I think we had 3,000 people doing the breath with me from yesterday. So it's awesome. And we had people from all over the planet, man. It's really, really cool. So let's uh, join me anytime you want. And any questions, you can get me through that or the Instagram. I think uh, Ben will give you my handle. Um, you can contact me through any of that stuff, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Cool, man. Right on. Awesome. And yeah, I'll stay on for a little bit here. If anyone has, I can talk about nose plugs if you guys want. <laughs> okay, guys, I got to go. So I'll see you again, hopefully, on the other end, breathing like a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome. Right on. Thank you, Bye, Dan. guys. Take care. Cheers, Bye. dude. Awesome. Yeah, how do we get rid of the nose plug, Ben? So, I, I, so no, it's such a personal decision, but I would look at it as a water quality and how much time you're spending upside down. Um, the last time I wore them, it was in China. And if I wasn't wearing them, I'd feel very congested very quickly. The place where I don't wear them that I wish I was is when I get on the North Fork of the Payette. I can't get down the whole run like midway down, I'll be congested. And then it's just sneezing and dribbly nose for a long time. But if you're flipping upside down a lot, you might as well wear them. Um, if you're practicing your role, I would wear them. But, and if the water quality is bad, but if you're not flipping upside down a lot and you're trying to paddle hard or you're trying to paddle hard rapids, you're gonna lose a lot of your intake just by plugging up your nostrils. It doesn't feel like it, but if you just plug your nose, like I, I, are, I have to breathe more through my mouth. So that's the main reason I don't wear them. That's not true. I don't think they, I think they look really silly. That's reason <laughs> one. Reason two, I, I don't like, like if I take a breath in through my mouth, I don't like the way it feels if I have nose plugs, I have to try harder. Um, so I wore them in China and it was tough because you're a little bit, of altitude there and I was freestyle kayaking, but I adjusted to it. Like if you're used to it, you're used to it. Um, and then, yeah, you do, do you like, I, do I what? Do you hum when you roll? No. To keep the pressure? Or oh, you to just let keep water, keep water. No, I'll, I don't, do you mean to keep uh, like pressure on your yeah. nose so water can't come in? Right. Yes. I can kind of close my, I can do that without humming, but. I think I probably do that a little bit. Um, yeah. And, and I typically breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And I try to have my exhales be a little bit longer than my inhales, just as that's like my calming breath. Or if my heart rate's up, instead of getting an eddy, I'll just go to that, that breath to keep things mellow and not not letting anything like spike up yeah it makes my mouth dry when i wear it and i already have a small bladder and so <laughs> then then i drink all my water and then i have to stop and pee. then i have to stop and pee and then my friends are like come on man let's go yeah you got lots of reasons to to not but it depends on like you just gotta weigh it like i on the north fork i don't i don't use them and i just i kind of suffer for the time that i'm there and then it goes away even on the ottawa river 
now that it's becoming summer, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff on the top of the water, like a lot of pollen and everything. And it, it just, as soon as it's a little bit warmer, like in two weeks, it gets really hard for me here. And I, I do have some nose plugs, but I, I don't really, I just wear them privately every once in a while when I'm practicing my role. Okay. Do you, would, do you do anything for like the discomfort of like when you're upside down and like, you know, for what do you do for like air or anything like that when you're only upside down and like that to keep yourself calm? Do you have any strategies for that? And like, even with your out in those plugs or anything? To stay calm if I'm missing rolls? Yeah. And, you know, getting worked or something like that in a hole. <laughs> Man, getting worked in a hole and staying calm is, I've just, I've just got so many years of getting worked in holes because I grew up paddling on this river. Um, and I honestly, I think that the best way to, um, to keep calm when, or something I really enjoy doing is I try to, simultaneously like I'm trying to roll or get out of the feature so I'm focused on that but understanding where exactly my boat is in the rapid or in the river and having a having an idea of like what is the actual situation and how much worse is it going to get if I swim so if I'm getting beaten in a hole where is that hole is it at the bottom of the rapid then I can probably relax a bit and think about the situation differently if it's at the top of the rapid then I will try to shift into like much more focus and much more um, like try to think of it like more technically because it needs situation needs to change and I have to I have to go through all of my options before I think about swimming and completely changing the whole situation. So I like to think of it um, like more literally, the more about like where I am in the rapid, what is the, what is the exact rapid? What is the layout of everything? And that just helps me. It's just, you just know, it's very easy to, to panic when you're flipping. Like you see it, people will be in the end of the rapid. It's just the current, the current's dying. There's big eddies on either side. And they're pulling their heads up, trying to just grab breaths and they gasp air in. And it's just, it keeps your mind spinning. And it's really kind of a panic. Um, but really, there's not much going on in the rapid anymore. So I like to think of the setting very literally. And that's how I, I, try, I decide, try to control like how intense I'm allowing myself to get based on how intense the actual situation is. Patrick, thank you so much. Does anyone else have questions about, I mean, that was pretty sweet. I, I, uh, it's so, I love doing those classes with him. Last spring, uh, Tyler Brott was with us. And when Dan, did his class we, we we finished we did two rounds we did three rounds of breathing we did we checked we talked about it we did yoga then we did five rounds and then we got in the the water and after the first three rounds we were all talking about it and Tyler sat up and he said what happened and we're like what do you mean he's like I kind of I think I blacked out <laughs> and he just he just I it kind of happened to me like I I didn't, I didn't fall asleep, but uh, someone came in the room and it, it startled me and I, I, I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh my gosh, I looked at the screen and I thought, oh, the screen's frozen. Like everyone's just sitting there wondering what's happening. Like I, I really like went away for a little bit. It was super cool. Benny, I'd like to just make a comment about that breathing this morning. It was, I mean, excellent. I almost... I mean, I definitely got tingly and uh, really, um, will you 
you have uh, like I've already forgotten like I know it was like four rounds of 30 breaths and then the the four seven eight thing that was phenomenal um, anyway but I'd love some notes on what we just did I won't retain uh, the 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 amount of what we just did I guess the routine the routine well I'm gonna I'm gonna once we finish I just move closer to the, the modem um, once we finish man I'm gonna upload this entire video and then I'll I'll cut just the breathing exercises and I'll upload that separately so that if you just want to have that audio or that video, it, it, it'll be that 35 or 40 minutes, whatever it was, versus however long this is going to be, and you can you can reference it that way. Uh, on that note, Ben, I'd sure. also love his pre-talk. Yeah, video. it'll it'll all. Well, I'll just upload this entire thing, and then I'll cut out just the the breathing part. Um, I mean, like. Can you can you can we have access to the talk that he said before the breathing and the breathing? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that cool, Chad? Does that help? Yeah. No. That's perfect. That's what I was hoping. I I was uh, I love I want to try and make this a daily routine for sure. That was that was awesome, and I was yeah. laughing because. Um, you know, I dabbled with this with you guys uh, last year, and I was doing it in my car once. And I definitely got lightheaded and he was like, never do that driving your car. And I had to laugh like, yeah, I'm that dumbass that tried that and probably could have died. Stupid. Dude, me, me too. I, I, I've done it in my car a lot and I've done it in my boat <laughs> and I've done it before. I've done it at, like before I slide into run spirit before, but <laughs> since, since I read more about it, I just, and I get more from it. Um, like I, I lay down for that and I got a lot, I get a lot more from it that way. I think than yeah, trying to do breathing exercises in your car. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. Do you do it every day? Would you say with like a cold like shower or how do you, what's your routine with this? Uh, my, when I, when I get in cold water, it's typically the most I do it is around here in the spring because the water is so cold and it's just very, it's just very easy and convenient. I'll finish running the river and when I'm getting close to the takeout, I'll maybe just paddle hard. So I heat up a bit and it makes the getting into the water a bit easier. Um, and if I go up to Quebec, for example, next week, the water is going to be much colder up there than it is down here. It's already, it's still really nice here, but it's getting warm, warmer. Like I need to be in the current, so that the I'm constantly getting new cold water. Um, so I feel like in the spring I do it quite a bit. Do you Once breathe every, every? Do you do the Wim Hof breathing like this every day? Or okay. No, no, yeah. I don't do it. What old like real the way that it works for me is because we just did it. I'll probably do it a handful of times over the next couple of weeks, and then I might kind of drop off. But it, but that I don't know. I'd like to to maybe try to do it a few mornings in a row. I I called Dan called me right before we started this, and he's just buzzing. He's like, he's like, oh, I'm doing so good, man. I just did an hour of breathing. I had ten minute cold shower, and he's got so much energy coming across the phone that makes me want to do it a bit more. So I do Ben, it like did a few you times you, a week? You passed out today. No, I didn't pass out. I, I just felt that I was in the place before, like sometimes in, in yoga classes at the end of a class, people will fall asleep and I'm definitely guilty of this. Like you do the Shavasana and you, it just happens. Like you're just so relaxed and you fall asleep but in here. I was on the floor and I was completely relaxed and then he stopped talking for a little bit and I felt like. I wasn't about to fall asleep, but I wasn't anywhere near awake. I was just, I don't know. I, I, it was a very nice. And then my friend's mom opened the door and I was like, Oh, whoa, what's going on?
Um, for me, when we were, after we stopped the breathing, I, my hands started to like curl up even during the relaxation part. So I had all that pins and needles and stuff, but then that went away and it, they were sort of stuck there. Did you look at them? Were they moving or? I don't think I looked. Cause <laughs> I had my hands like one on my stomach, one on my chest. And I, I, I felt like they were moving, but then I just thought of like where I had contact with them. And it just, it just a weird sensation. I felt like they were moving, but they weren't. Hmm. You know what I found interesting was like, I deaf in one ear, but I felt like as we were laying there for a while and doing the breathing, like all the senses, like I'm outside. So I hear all the birds and it's more clear. It's like not like a normal day where it's just all the gawking and everything, but you can actually, like your sensations are heightened. Yeah. Not just physically, but like the hearing too. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Awesome, guys. Thank you for this, Benny. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, uh, yeah, I wanted to start with Dan because it's something that we can do. Like the quicker you get to experience that, the more likely you are to just just keep trying it. So it's nice to have Dan kind of kick things off. His breathing is, is I don't it, know, it's so important. It's so nice. Stuff? Sorry. Is his you name stuff in the schedule? His, his full name or website? Yeah, I'll, uh, when I email you with the links to access these videos, I'll have his, his name and his Facebook and Instagram and everything. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because yeah, he does a lot online, um, just through his, his center, most of it's free, I think. Awesome. Well, sweet. I'll see you guys. Uh, Hope everyone can make it, but same deal. We'll meet up later on and it'll be recorded and available, but I'll see you guys around then. Thanks, Ben. We'll see you awesome. Thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks, Ben. Thanks, ben. Thanks, ben. Thanks, ben. No I may not make it tonight. So, how do I access the recording? Uh, you'll get an email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again. Okay. Cool. See you guys. See ya.